Welcome back to Photoshop Classroom in a Book, Chapter 1. We are starting again on page 19, working with tools and tool properties using context menus. Context menus are short menus that contain commands and options appropriate to specific elements in the work area. They are sometimes referred to as right-click or shortcut menus. Usually the commands on a context menu are also available in some other area of the user interface, but using the context menu can save you time. Select the Zoom tool and zoom in so you can clearly see the lower third of the card. Select the Rectangular Marquee tool in the Tools panel. The Rectangular Marquee tool selects rectangular areas. Drag the Rectangular Marquee tool to create a selection about a half inch tall and two inches wide ending at the right edge of the card. Notice the size tool that comes up as you're clicking and dragging. So we want approximately a half inch tall, approximately two inches wide. Yours may vary slightly from what mine does. Selection areas are shown by moving dotted lines, sometimes referred to as crawling or marching ants. Next, select the brush tool. In the image window, right click or control click anywhere in the image to open the brush tool context menu. Context menus vary with their context, of course. So what appears can be a menu of commands or a panel-like set of options. Select the first brush and change the size to 65 pixels or approximately that. Click anywhere outside of the selection to close the panel. Drag the cursor across the selected area until it's fully painted blue. Don't worry about staying within the selection. Only the selected area can be painted. We have an opacity on this brush and if you would like to increase the opacity you can adjust the opacity up in the uh, context menu across the top. I'm going to bring my opacity up now to 81 percent so that what I brush is going to be more complete and I get a more complete fill. When the bar is colored in, choose select, deselect, and nothing is selected the selection is gone. There's no more crawling ants, but the blue bar is still there. Photoshop has many tools you can use to edit image files, but you will probably work with only a few of them at a time. The tools panel arranges some of the tools in groups, with only one tool showing for each group. The others are hidden behind that tool. We're going to use the polygonal lasso tool to remove a triangular notch from the color bar so it matches the ribbon at the top of the card. A small triangle in the lower right corner of a button is your clue to finding, just like in, in Illustrator, to finding other tools hidden. Position the pointer over the lasso. We have the lasso, the polygonal or polygonal polygon lasso. You can also use your shift plus your Al key which cycles between the poly, the lasso, and the magnetic poly, or magnetic lasso. With the lasso tool, you can draw free form selections. It also makes it easier to draw straight edge selections of a selection border. And you'll learn more, much more about this when we get to chapter three. Right now, you're going to take your pointer over to the left edge of the blue color bar. Click just to the left. If you need to zoom in a little closer, click just to the left 
of the upper left corner to start your selection. Click just to the left of the bottom left corner to create the second side. Oh, sorry. Move your cursor to the right about a quarter of an inch and about halfway down and click again and then click again. If you didn't get it exactly right, it's okay. You can redo your selection. And there it's completed. And you can redo as many times as you need. Now just press the delete button on your keyboard. And that's going to delete the selected area from the color bar. And that creates the notch in the ribbon. Go up again to select and deselect. Now we're going to add a name to the birthday card. In the tool panel, select the horizontal type tool. The buttons in the menu option bar are now related to the type tool. We can select our font from the first pop-up window. They used Minion Pro. You can use another font if you'd like. I'll use Minion. Let's see if I can find Minion. Hmm. There it is, Minion Pro. And I'll use Minion Pro Regular. Oh, Minion Pro, Pro Italic. There it is. And we're going to use 32 points for the font. You can type that in directly. Click once anywhere on the left side of the color bar and type your name. We will change the position of the text later. The text is the same as the color bar we typed in, so we can't see it. We're going to fix that next. The text color is the same as the foreground color swatch in the tools panel, which is the blue color we use to paint the bar. We're going to select the text and choose another color from the swatches panel. With your horizontal type tool, you're going to click and drag through the text that you created. Click the swatches tab to bring the swatches forward. If you don't see the swatches up here, go to window, swatches. There it is. It comes up in this toolbar and now we're looking for a light colored swatch. It doesn't matter what color you use. The color you select appears in three places. It comes up in the foreground color in the tools panel. It also comes up as the text color in the option bar. And it shows in the text we selected. Select the move tool to deselect the text so you can see the text color. That's how easy it is to select a color, although there's other methods available. Click the menu button on the swatches panel, which opens the panel menu, and choose small list. Select the type tool and reselect the type as we just did. You can double click if you'd like or you can click and drag. In the swatches panel, scroll about halfway down to find the light yellow. I'm going to drag this menu so you can see the names and use whatever color you want. You don't need to do the light yellow orange. You can do pea green or yellow green or anything that you want as long as I can see the text. Now select the move tool again. That's going to deselect the text. text. And we also want to drag this down and position it. All you need to do is click and drag on the text itself and you can position it where it's centered on the ribbon. In a perfect world, 
we never make a mistake. You've never clicked the wrong object. You never click the wrong color. You never have to backtrack. But for the real world, Photoshop gives you the power to step back and undo things. You can experiment knowing that you can always reverse the process. Even beginning computer users quickly come to appreciate the familiar undo. You use it to step back one step and then step back further. In this case, we're going to go back to the light color that you originally chose for the name. So we're going to go to Edit, and I'm going to undo Move, Edit, Step Backward. You can also use your Control, Alt, and Z, or Control, Command, Z to step backward. Well, now I've stepped back too far. There it is. The undo command reverses only one step. This is a practicality. Photoshop files can be very large. Maintaining multiple undo steps ties up a lot of memory, and that can degrade your performance. Control Z in Photoshop will first undo, and then it will redo. You can use the step backward and the step forward. You can also use the history panel because the history panel records everything that you've done and it has a much larger list of everything that you've done. And so you can go back to any point in time and select that. Anything you do beyond will be deleted. So if I go back to my new type, new type layer and I select a different color for my type, which I can do, uh, let me just select my type and bring up my swatches again and I can pick up something that I like better. And I go back to my history, you can see that that is all I've got. I can go back in with my Move Cool tool now, and as soon as I do, I have Edit Type Layer in my history, and I re reposition my type where I want it. I can go back now, I can zoom out, I can look at my card, and I have finished it. Again, you want to save this with, this time we're going to do a save to save your Photoshop file. But next, we're going to do this as a Photoshop PDF file, keeping your layers, and save. Again, we're going to save as press quality preserving your Photoshop editing capabilities, and save your PV PDF. This is fine. You can continue. And you will get your PDF that you will send to me.